Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will learn how to enable and configure LAN routing on Windows Server 2025. LAN routing is very important as it allows devices from different IP subnets or networks to communicate with each other. This is especially useful when you have multiple VLANs and different partitions or isolated network segments and you need it to exchange data securely and efficiently. By default, devices on separate networks can't talk to each other, but once LAN routing is properly configured, your Windows server will act like a router forwarding traffic between those networks. In this video, we'll learn how to use LAN routing to work on three different IP ranges and three different networks. We'll also learn how to leverage routing to communicate with each other allowing a client computer to easily access another subnet. Okay, let's start step by step. I have a server running with Windows Server 2025 named Do It Server 2025 and running on a domain named ok25.local. Click on Ethernet to find out the server's IP address. You can, of course, find the IP address from the local server manager page, but it's better to do this in detail to make the steps easier for the viewer. I have the server's IP address, which is 10.0.0.200, and the subnet mask is 255.0.0. This is the first IP range. I have another computer on the same switch or network, but it runs on a different IP address than the server. This computer runs Windows 11. Open the run box and enter ncpa.cpl to quickly open the Network Connections section. Then right-click on Ethernet and select Properties. Then select IP version 4 and click Properties. This computer is operating with an IP address of 172.16.1.50 and a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, which is a different range than the server. It operates on a different network. We will also test the connection between the computer and the server using the ping command. Open the command prompt window and execute the ping command on the server and the server address of 10.0.0.200. The command results in, this computer cannot communicate with the server because it is operating on a different network and is unable to connect to the server's IP range. I will also open another computer. This one running Windows 11. Open the run box and enter ncpa.cpl to quickly open the network connection section. Right click on the Ethernet and select Properties. Then select IP version 4 and click Properties. Here, you'll find that the IP range of this computer is completely different from the IP range of the server. And the first computer, which is 192168. 250 and the subnet mask is 255 255 255 0. Also, when checking the connection using the ping command, it should be unable to communicate or connect to the server because it is on a different IP range than the server and the first computer. And when executing the ping command, the result should be a request timeout. This means that there is no routing path between the client and the server's subnet, and therefore the ping command was unable to reach its target. And back to the server again, and before starting the steps to install the LAM routing, I will do a ping test for both the 172.116.150 range and the 192.168.2.250 range to make sure that the server really cannot connect to any other range. And indeed, the server cannot connect to any of the two ranges on the other two computers. After verifying that routing between the three networks is not yet working, I'll now install the remote access role on the server to act as a router and reroute data between these three different networks. The steps for installing the remote access role are very simple. From the server manager window, click dashboard on the left panel then click Add Roles and Features. This wizard allows you to install different server roles, in our case, Remote Access, 
which includes routing features. On the Before You Begin page, you'll see some explanatory text. Click the Next button to continue. In the Choose Installation Type step, select the Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation option and click Next. And in the Select Destination Service step, you'll see a list of servers if you have more than one. Select the local server and click Next button to continue. Here, in this step, you can choose server roles. From the list, scroll down and select the remote access box and click Next. In the Features page, click the Next button without selecting any options, then click Next. Here in the step of specifying role services, select the routing option and a pop-up window will appear asking to add the required features. Click on Add Features and click on Next button. Click Next, Next, and finally, Confirm and Install. Click the Install button and wait for the installation to complete. The installation process may take a few minutes. You don't need to reboot after this role installation, but you'll need to configure Routing and Remote Access RRAS afterward. Once finished, click Close button. You're now ready to move on to configuring LAN routing using the RRAS console. Your Windows Server 2025 machine is now ready to operate as a router between different networks. Click the Tools menu from the Server Manager page, and from the menu, click Routing and Remote Access. After opening the RRAS console, on the left side, under Routing and Remote Access, you'll see your server name listed. Right-click the server name, and from the menu, click Configure and Enable Routing and Remote Access. This will launch the RRAS wizard, which guides you through the routing setup process. When the wizard starts, you will see a welcome screen. This is just an introductory screen, so click Next button to continue the steps. Here, you'll be asked to select a configuration type. Select the Custom Configuration option because we'll only be setting up local network routing and don't need VPN or NAT features in this scenario. Click Next button. When selecting the services you want to configure, select the LAN routing service box. This option allows the LAN routing server to act as a router and forward packets between the different networks it connects to. And click Next. In this step, you'll see a summary of the configuration options. Click the Finish button. A message will appear asking, do you want to start the service now? Click the Start Service button. This activates the RRAS engine, enabling the server to begin routing traffic between its network interfaces. Wait a few seconds for the service to start. Now, after completing the LAN routing configuration, I'll check the network interfaces and manually add static routes to define communication between networks. On the left side, expand server name. Then expand IPv4. You'll now see a sub-item labeled General. This section displays all active network interfaces detected by Windows Server. These are physical or virtual network interfaces that are enabled, connected, and have a dedicated IP address. Each network interface listed here corresponds to a different subnet or network to which your server is connected. This indicates that RRAS recognizes every network to which the server is connected and is able to route traffic between them. As you can see, it displays a single network interface with the IP address 10.0.0.200, which is the servers. Since I'm using a single network interface and have more than three different IP ranges, I'll configure it using static routes. And under IPv4, you'll find another important section, Static Route. This allows you to manually create a rule that tells the server to send traffic to this specific network, destination, then redirect it through this interface or gateway. This rule is like saying to reach 192.168.2.0/24. Use this switch or interface or IP address for the next hop. Therefore, I will manually add the three static routes. So right-click on Static Route and select New Static Route. A dialog box will now appear, automatically selecting the network card name in the Interface field, 
since I only have one network card on this server. And in destination field, enter the network address, not the IP address of the host. So I will enter the address 172.16.1.0 for the host whose IP address is 172.16.150. And in the network mask field, enter the appropriate subnet mask for the network address of the destination. In my case, I will enter 255.255.0.0. And in the gateway field, enter the next hop IP address, which is the router's address and the server's address. In many cases, when routing a local area network, leave it blank because the interface is connected directly. Finally, leave the metric as default and click OK. And so the first range has been added. And in the same way, I will add the second range. Right click on static route and select new static route and add the network address for the second range and enter the appropriate network mask for the network address of the destination. And in the gateway field, enter the IP address of the router and click the OK button. After adding the second range, right click on static route and select new static route to add the third range in the same way and click OK. After adding the three ranges, your server will provide access to each subnet directly through its attached network card, ensuring precise routing between networks and eliminating confusion in multi-NIC environments. This step also made routing clear and reliable and prepared the server to act as a dedicated router between the three networks I explained in the video. Now for the final part of the video. I will verify that routing works after configuration before moving on to the client computer. Open the network connection section and enter the default gateway in the network card settings, which is the IP address of the server or routing server. Then open the first computer and also add or enter the default gateway in the network card settings, which is the IP address of the server or routing server. This step is important because the default gateway is what allows the computer to send data to other networks. Without it, clients cannot access devices outside their subnet, even with routing enabled. Next, open the command prompt window and enter the command ipconfig. This is important to ensure that the IP settings are set correctly before testing the connection with the ping command. After that, Enter the ping command to test the connection to the server. You should receive responses from the routing server. This confirms that routing via the server, via the 10.0.0.200 gateway, is working successfully. Then open the second computer and follow the same steps. Add or enter the default gateway in the network card settings, which is the IP address of the server or routing server. Also open the command prompt window and enter the ipconfig command to ensure that the IP settings are set correctly before testing the connection with the ping command. Then execute the ping command to test the connection to the server. You should receive responses from the routing server. This also confirms that routing via the server through the 10.0.0.200 gateway is working successfully. Returning to the server, and open the command prompt window and enter the ipconfig command to ensure that the IP settings are set correctly before testing the connection with the ping command. Then run the ping command to test connectivity to other networks or ranges. You should receive responses from the other IP addresses that have been routed, which means that everything on the routing server is working successfully. I also want to ensure that the two computers are communicating with each other and rerouting data between these networks. I believe everything is working well now and all networks and ranges can communicate with each other and route data between them successfully. That's all for today's video. I apologize for the length, but I wanted to explain each step in detail. We've now learned how to enable LAN routing on Windows Server 2025 starting with installing the remote access role, configuring RRAS, verifying network interfaces, and even manually adding static routes.
We then confirmed that everything was working properly by testing actual connectivity between clients on different networks. Is setup is essential in environments where multiple subnets or VLANs need to communicate via a single server acting as a router. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video to support the channel and subscribe to my channel for more Windows Server and IT lessons. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.